good morning from a pretty cold Brussels, at least by our standards back in South Africa. Uh, I want to tell you about the very strange and unfortunate developments that happened over the last few days over this uh, NATCON conference, the National Conservatism Conference. Uh, now let me just first say we are here, me and my colleague Daniel Maritz, uh, who's from Academia. Uh, we are here as part of a European liaison tour where we attended NATCON. We are leaving for Budapest uh, today where we will attend uh, CPAC, the Conservative Political Action Conference, uh, where I will be a speaker. Uh, we will have a variety activi of activities and events in, in Budapest. From there we will go to Romania where we will participate in an international conference about minority rights. So we have a very busy two and a half weeks ahead of us. But one would expect that if you were to come from a country like Africa or like South Africa, from a continent such as Africa, to a country like Belgium or a city like Brussels or a continent like Europe, that you would expect some degree of freedom and tolerance that you are not used to this part of the world like to describe themselves as the free world for all that matters. Uh, but we have known of obviously for some time that freedom and tolerance and, and classical Western values have been under threat for some time in Europe and in the West and increasingly so. And so it is, it is a strange experience uh, coming to a place like Brussels and then experiencing the extent to which uh, the authorities are willing to go to suppress very, very basic democratic freedoms. So uh, the conference, the National Conservatism Conference, is hosted by a variety of organizations, mainstream organizations, the, the Edmund Burke Foundation, the magazine, the European Conservative, uh, and, and several others. MCC is also involved, the Matthias Corvinus Collegium, a think tank from, from uh, Hungary, also with an office here in Brussels. So there's a variety of organizations involved and at this conference a variety of speakers from all over the world have been scheduled to speak, including um, at least one current prime minister and one former prime minister. So this is not some fringe extremist conference. It's very moderate, mainstream conservative, you might say. Now, Brussels is a city that is divided in several districts or municipalities or areas, each with its own mayor. There's not one, uh, one mayor in Brussels, so to speak. The conference was organized for a particular venue in Brussels. The day before the conference was supposed to start, uh, two, three days ago, we were already in Brussels, ready to attend. We received an email from the organizer saying that on short notice, the conference had to move to another venue, uh, which was a bit strange, a strange email to receive the day before the conference, but we, we accepted it, no problem. Um, and then that evening, the, the night before the conference, we re suddenly received another evil email, which said that the conference has had to move again to another venue. And it turns out that what has happened here is that the mayor of uh, the first uh, area has decided that he would not allow such a uh, conversation to take place, such a conference to take place, that, that this conference should be banned for all purposes. Um, and so they called the hotel, they apparently or allegedly threatened the hotel with, with boycotts and all sorts of damages that, that the hotel, that the business would incur if they continue with the conference and the hotel uh, cracked under the pressure. So they moved the day before. And then uh, the evening before, they, the logistics that the was already in place, the banners, the promotional material, everything was already up when the same thing happened. And so by five o'clock in the afternoon, the day before the conference, uh, the organizers suddenly found themselves in a position where they did not know, they did not have a venue, and they did not know where um, the conference would take place. They were able to secure a third location and the conference started as usual with very, very minor logistical uh, delays and, and things like that. So a big compliment to the organizers in that regard. Then, as the conference started, suddenly the police arrived 
and it turns out that this new mayor has also even tweeted about this saying that he is he has sent out an order to have the conference banned and he has sent the police to shut it down so uh, initially three police officers arrived they told the organizers the conference has to stop the organizers said well it's not really that easy i mean there's i don't know a thousand people inside um, and there are speakers on stage so the police came in they realized that only three police officers didn't really have the capacity or the ability to shut it down so more showed up and the mayor's argument was that this has to be shut down in order to preserve uh, a public or prevent a public disturbance and it turns out what happened was that antifa had uh, complained about the conference the so-called anti-fascist group or i might say the the fascist group pretending to be anti-fascist uh, and they had put pressure on the local government to to ban the conference to prevent people from discussing ideas and again as i said it's not even extremist ideas or anything to that effect uh, ideas such as the importance of the family the preservation of western values the efficacy of different uh, political systems the importance of freedom of speech and things like that but this was not sufficient so they had decided to shut it down uh, but it wasn't that easy so it Initially, there were three police officers. Later, it became more. They were, at one stage, I counted about 20. They cordoned off the area. You were not able to get in. And um, they eventually decided that they're going to have what was described as a soft shutdown. So there were talks about people trying to shut down the electricity. I'm not sure if that was from the local government or from Antifa or groups like that to prevent the conference from going on. There were talks about the police coming in and, and physically taking the people out, which fortunately didn't happen. Uh, but eventually they decided on the soft shutdown. So what that effectively meant was that they would get, prevent the caterers from coming in uh, so that the people did not, did not get food or drinks inside. And then if people leave, they are not able to go back in. So the doors that were shut down were shut in front uh, initially. Uh, a truck was pulled up in front of the conference to prevent people. Um, uh, by the organizers to prevent people who were trying to disrupt the conference from coming in. The police ordered them to move the truck. And um, so a lot of people, or no, not a lot of people, a few people left. But most of the people just stayed inside. Eventually the caterers did arrive and um, the conference went on as normal. There was also an urgent court case. I, I do not know what the outcome of the court case was, but there was an urgent court application. I'm not, a, I'm not sure if there is a, a ruling yet to prevent them from doing this. But I want to say quick, two quick things about uh, this whole event. The first is about the, the consequences of, uh, of something like this for the left. Now, in a sense, you might say, and some, many have said that this is a complete own goal because what happened here was... Um, uh, rejected and condemned by people from all over the world including several prime ministers uh, organizations think tanks and so forth uh, it was international news coverage but I'm not convinced that they regard this as an own goal because from my understanding there's as is very understandable from a South African perspective some threats from even more radical groups on the left to the political stability of those in power and they would like to maintain their power. So in a sense, this was a political move to show to the more radical forces to the left of those in power that they can still vote for them. It's like the, the ANC in South Africa trying to be more radical and more extreme so that people wouldn't, would not vote for Julius Malema and, and, and the EFF. Uh, but the, the irony is very stalking that all of this is done under the banner of promoting freedom or protecting freedom. Uh, when this is clearly, there's no rational way in which you can explain shutting down a conference under the banner of promoting freedom. But the other comment I want to make is about the consequence thereof on the people who attended the conference, which is really something to, to behold, is it filled the people with a sense of mission, with a recognition that they are on the right side and that they have to continue. So the overwhelming sentiment inside the conference was one of of persistence of not allowing those who are trying to shut down the conference to shut down the conference and to be even more vocal and more involved so if this has had any impact on the conservative movement it certainly was to rejuvenate it 
to to inject it with new energy and more energy so in that sense this certainly was an own goal there is a lot more to be said about the future of freedom uh, and classical western values and the basic principles of constitutionalism in, in the west and in europe in particular of which we are very concerned but at least it was good to see an event like this a very unfortunate attempt such as this play out the way it did and the and the fact also that it 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 ended in a in, in a sense in a positive note meaning that uh, i'm very sure that those who attended this conference are very upset and especially the organizers about what has happened but in a certain sense uh, i think a lot of people are glad that this happened for exposing the ways of thinking of those in power but also for encouraging those who attended this conference and uh, showing to them that they are on the right side but also encouraging them to to keep up the good fight